kind of lazy and just wrote things out by hand here. So I'll read it to you to make sure you can uh, read my hand or... So this is, <clears throat> this is a determining a molecular weight or molar mass uh, from a colligative property information. So we're going to take a solution uh, and it's prepared by dissolving 0.3 grams of a non-electrolyte in water to make a total of 10 milliliters of solution. Okay. The osmotic pressure of the solution is 11.25 atmospheres at 298 Kelvin. Um, what is the molar mass of the non-electrolyte? How would you like to do today? Would you want to try the problem first? How many, or do you want me to just do it? Raise your hand for try it first. Raise your hand for just do it. All right, we're going to try the problem first. So I won't give you forever, but um, yeah. So I'll give you a few minutes. Give it a whirl.
Okay, how's this problem? How many people feel like this is one of the harder ones? It's an easy one. Okay, really, really no one's at raising their hand. I'll just stop. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's get started on this one. So, um, the goal here is to determine molar mass, which it would be in units of grams of solute per mole of solute, or just simply grams per mole, right? What we know is the osmotic pressure, and we have our osmotic pressure equation, pi equals I times M times R times T. So our Van Hoff factor is I. We have a non-electrolyte. Uh, so I, in that case, is going to be 1. M is the molarity. And that's something we don't know. But when we solve, this is going to be the only variable we don't know. When we solve for molarity, it's going to allow us to then carry on to determine grams per mole, but we'll get there. R is the gas constant, 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. Okay, well, we want these units. We don't want the other R. And T is the temperature in Kelvin, in this case, 298 Kelvin. Okay. So if we solve for molarity, we're going to get moles of solute per liter of solution. want to find grams of solute per moles of solute, grams per mole. Well, you know, one other piece of information from this problem, and that is the volume. So we can get liters of solution. So we were given is uh, 10, mil, 10 milliliters, which is 0 0.010 well, two zeros there at the end, liters. Okay. I'm just kind of laying out what we have. So, two-step problem. Step one, we're going to solve for molarity. Step two, we're going to use that piece of information and the volume given in the problem to find moles. And then part two B is going to solve for transfer. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to rearrange the osmotic pressure equation to solve for molarity. So we're going to have M equals osmotic pressure over I times R times T. Osmotic pressure was given in atmospheres, which is good. It's going to cancel with uh, our unit in R. If it's in TOR, you would need to um, convert it to atmospheres. There was a problem like that on the recitation, I believe. So we have 11.25 atmospheres. I is 1. R, 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles Kelvin times the temperature in Kelvin. When we solve for this, we're going to get a molarity of 0 0.460 moles of solute per liter of solution. Is everyone okay up to that point? Okay. The next part's a little bit of that sort of that leap. So we need to get rid of this liters of solution. We want to know how many moles we put into this flask or whatever it was 
to make uh, this solution with this concentration. If we know the number of moles we put in, we already know the number of grams we put in. So we can relate those two and get grams per mole. Okay? So the way this works, we're going to take our molarity. Point four six zero moles of solute per liter of solution, multiply by the volume, point zero one zero zero liters of solution. That cancels, and we get point zero zero four six zero moles of solute. Is everyone okay with that? You're seeing why we do that. Okay. And remember our goal is grams of solute per mole of solute. We know how many grams we use, 0.3 grams in the problem. So if we take our mass of solute, 0.3 grams, divide it by the moles, let's check our units here, we get grams per mole, both of solute, and we'll end up with a value of 65.24, we'll leave an extra sig figure two on here, grams per mole. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Oh, six things on the exam. So um, uh, I believe whenever you have to input a number, it tells you how many digits after the decimal to input. So just follow those instructions. Here, how many sig figs would we have? Do we care? The answer for me is no, but. Uh, we're limited to two sig figs here, so we would only have 65 in our answer. Okay. Other things? Okay. Um, oh no, I've lost a problem. Okay, that's okay, we'll rewrite it. But I have one of these problems. So an, an initial rate problem. Can you all read my handwriting okay? All right. So we have a reaction where A plus B forms some products, P, and we have several uh, experiments that we've done. Um, and we have concentration data for A, concentration data for B, and an initial rate for each of those different experiments. And from that, let's determine the rate law. Okay, so this is our method of initial rates. And I'll let you all have a few minutes to do that. Have at it.
All right. How's this problem? How's this type? Good? Good? Okay. I'm seeing some, some nods. That feels, that feels good. Um, I will go over how to solve. So uh, we need to determine the rate law. So in the form of rate equals K, rate constant, times the concentration of A raised to some power, its order, uh, we'll call that M, times the concentration of B raised to its order, we'll call that N. When we're picking out experiments to determine the order, we have to hold uh, one set of concentrations constant and the other has to change. So if we want to find the order with respect to, the, to A, we'll hold B constant. So for A, we can use experiments one and three. And I think I've decided I really like the form of finding M where we do rate of one of the experiments over rate of the other experiment equals the concentration of that one experiment over the concentration of the other raised to this order. Okay? So I'm doing three and one here to represent experiment three and experiment one. Questions on that point? Getting to, getting to there. OK. So then we can just plug in some information. Um, we're going to have 25.47 divided by 2.83 equals 0 0.819 divided by 0 0.273 raised to some power m. And we end up with 9 equals 3 to some power m. And what must m be? <coughs> M is 2. Okay. 3 squared is 9. Questions? OK, so then we need to find the order with respect to B. And uh, for B, if I look at the table, we can hold the concentration of A constant with experiments 1 and 2, and look at how B if we, we'll double the concentration of B and see how the rate changes. Take a look at that right now, right now, just in the table. If we double the concentration of B, what happens to the rate? Nothing. So that's a big clue. You might not have to do the math, but we'll do the math. In this case, we're going to have the rate of experiment 2 is 2.83 over the rate of experiment 1, 2.83 equals the concentration of experiment 2, 1.526 divided by 0.763, which is the concentration in experiment 1, and that's raised to some power. And we'll get 0 equals 2 raised to some power. Sorry, not zero. I, I got excited there. One equals two to some power. And so what does that make? N, zero. A number raised to uh, a zero is one. So in this case, what we end up for the rate law is rate equals the rate constant K times a whoops, squared. And we leave off b raised to the 0 power. Yes? Um, for the example, we have to like, calculate the value of k. You may have to calculate the value, value of k. So and now the next step, I could ask you to calculate k. Right? You have these data. And so if you wanted to calculate k, you have the rate law. Rate equals k times a squared. You could take the data from experiment one, put in the concentration of a, of a, put in the initial rate for rate, and then solve for k. Yeah? So the question, what is the rate law you don't have to solve for k? If the question is, what is the rate law no, you don't have to solve for k? Yeah. 
Oh, I, for, for, re, re, bleh, for determining the order with respect to B, I chose experiments one and two uh, because the concentrations of A didn't change. Yeah. Yes, yes. And we want the concentrations to be, for B to change. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for like finding K or for the rate, law? the rate law? Okay, so this is the rate law. So that whole thing is the rate law. Got one more problem I forgot to write it out. Um, I'm going to do a problem with integrated rate laws. So everyone, does anyone have? Yeah, got, good. I've got some affirmation. Um, any questions on this? All right. So let's add a slide. I don't care. Put, just do a thing. Be something like this with the data table. A, uh... Yeah, that's what I think. All right, relatively easy to write out here. So um, we have a, I'm going to write, we have a rate constant K for a zero order reaction. Is Point zero four seven moles per liter times seconds to the minus one. If we have an initial concentration, so A sub zero, of point seven seven eight molar, how long does it take for the concentration to decrease to point one molar? And we can look at, so we, we want to find how long it takes for the concentration to decrease to 0.1 molar, and we'll determine the answer in seconds. Um, that's simply based on our rate constant unit. Okay, so the rate constant K for a zero order reaction is 0.047 moles per liter times inverse seconds. The initial concentration of the reactant is 0.778 molar. How long does it take for the concentration to decrease to 0.1 molar? So again, remember that you will have the integrated rate law equations on the exam, but they're not going to be labeled, so you have to be able to pick out the zero order one. And um, I'll go ahead and write that for us. The zero order integrated rate law is that the concentration of A at time T is equal to minus the rate constant K times T plus 
the initial concentration. So we have that. We have our rate constant. K is 0 0.047. We have an initial concentration. A sub zero is 0 0.778 molar. What else do we know? Yeah, the concentrate, oh, look at all the hands. Everyone yelled out simultaneously, go. <laughs> Beautiful. Final concentration, or A at time T, is 0 0.1001, or 100, excuse me. Okay, everyone see how we got that? So the only thing we don't have in our integrated rate law is time t. So we can rearrange that equation to solve for t and plug in some values. So rearrange. I'm going to take on the left-hand side of the equation a at time t minus a initial. I'll do it in two steps, equals minus k times t, and then divide both sides by minus k. So we'll get a at time t minus a initial divided by minus k equals t. So that's going to be our time in seconds. Everyone okay with that? I didn't let you practice. Um, so now we can plug the values in, solve. I've done the hard part, so we'll just go ahead and keep going. Um, a at time t is going to be 0 0.100 minus 0.778 for the initial concentration divided by minus 0 0.047. And we'll end up with 14.4 seconds or 14 seconds. So if, you, so if you if you look at the equation, how we've rearranged it, right? We end up with an equation that has A at later times and minus the initial, okay? So the initial concentration is always going to be higher. So we have a smaller number minus a bigger number, which will give us a negative value, which is good. We want that. We want it to cancel with this negative rate constant. Okay, so we end up with a positive value for time. Okay. Questions on that? We could take this one, one more step, or kind of even back it up a little bit. Using the same uh, zero order reaction, 0.047 rate constant, Instead of asking how long does it take to get to a certain um, co concentration, we could say what is the concentration after a certain amount of time. So let's say what is the concentration after one second. Okay. So you can use the integrated rate law again. Now we're going to solve for A at time t. Right. We use our same initial concentration, 0.778 molar. K is the same. And time is going to be one second. So A at time T minus 0 0.047 moles per liter per second times 1 plus 0 0.778.
And again, don't forget that minus sign. If you forget that minus sign, you're going to end up with a concentration that is higher than your initial concentration, which won't work. And should get 0 0.731 moles per liter. Questions? Yes. haven't already. You have five minutes now. It might be a good time. Right. I'll hang out here and answer questions. Good luck tomorrow. I really am rooting for you. required for a reaction to be 75% complete. Yeah. That means there's 25% of the initial concentration left. We can use it as a fraction. Okay. See, the concentration at time t is a quarter, a quarter of the initial concentration. Okay. And now you have this as a value. You can substitute it on this into this equation. Okay. And you can end up getting some really nice output. You're welcome to a picture of that. Yeah. And then, so like if it was 19%, it'd just be like... Yes. Okay. And then are we going to need to be able to do like the unit analysis? Or the, uh, okay. okay. We're not here. Thank you. So for those, I would know the basic definitions and, and kind of be able to picture in your mind what a solution of each of those looks like and what you can do in terms of adding solutes and practice solutes. What you can do in terms of evaporation or pulling solution off the top or adding more water or solvent. Mm -hmm. So that. is so unsaturated there's you can't see any solute. Correct. correct. And then saturated you can. Yes. And then super saturated you also You also can sometimes. Some, yeah, that one's tricky. That one's trickier. One's trickier. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, I would think more about the super saturated. What happens if you add water or if you take it off? Take it off. Okay, thank you. You'll be okay. All right. Um, so I was just wondering when we're supposed to be like, using these, the half life ones. Oh, so those are for the half life. They're just supposed to be like half life. Okay. Half life. So T one half. Okay. And then kind of like, oh, is it when you let water out of like super saturated that is on the well, we let solution out. If you if you add water, does it keep the same concentration? Oh, and then you let the solution out, so it's not true. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know. It's close to half. Okay. 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 Okay.
the video. Sorry, that was on there. It's not recording back Because yeah. when I did that problem, I solved the pay because I'm okay. out of force to have it. So sure. like, I guess that's not really wrong. Like, yeah. So, but the order, but determining the order from there, would you, you don't add the coefficients, do you? And is, it, is that, because overall order. What's, that's overall. Right? Yeah. So how would you find the um, order? So finding the order, yeah. we, we would most likely be doing method of initial rates. So that's when we add the data table. Mm -hmm. And we're, de we're determining M that way. Yeah. Do you need the... Does that help? Uh, so you would see something like I don't think I have it would be it. like an HDMI to lightning D or something like that.